Hello everyone, my name is David and today I'm going to talk about the ISP failover option. If your business cannot afford to have a downtime because you rely heavily on the internet connection, for example because you moved everything to the cloud or you don't have any local file server, local, any kind of local server, everything is through the internet, then you rely on the internet connection, all your services are running through the internet all the time and any downtime causes you to lose money. This video will show you how to configure Cisco router so you stop losing money when your primary ISP goes down because the router we configured today will switch over to the second ISP. Here's the scenario. We have two ISPs here, primary and secondary backup ISP. We have non-managed switch. This is just a layer two switch. It's actually managed, but um, there's nothing on it. Just a default configuration. We have Windows computer and we have router. This router will have two ISPs, primary and secondary. These are the subnets for the ISPs. And each of the ISPs last octet is dot one. And the router's IP address will, is going to be dot 10 from the subnet of course and then this is the subnet of the windows computer and routers inside interface let's start configuration of this router and let's see what we can do with it so let's start configuration first of all we go into primary interface that's going to be interface gigabit ethernet one and i'm going to put description there and ip address of course and not configuration now let's enable the interface and go into second interface for the second ISP. Description here is going to be secondary ISP. This is the IP address configuration and not configuration. No shot. And now it's time to configure the third interface, which is going to be inside interface of our network. And the NAT configuration is going to be inside, not outside, because this is an inside interface. And no shot. Now we need to add the access list, which we can use in the NAT configuration. This access list is to match the traffic in our route map configuration. And the reason we use route map because we want to translate and activate the NAT only for the interfaces if it's egress interface of the default route. Because what happens if the this interface is still up? We cannot make this interface down or we don't want to make it down and the NAT will still work unless we use the route map and I'm going to show you what route map I'm talking about. Okay, in this route map, I'm saying match only the traffic from access list NAT and only if the traffic goes out through the Gigabit Ethernet 1. Now, this is just a match. We need to use this route map in the NAT configuration. But first, let me create the second route map for the second ISP traffic. Route maps are created. Now, we need to create the NAT configuration and tell router to use these route maps in the NAT configuration. Here, our route map option. So instead of using the list and the access list we created, this one, we are going to use route map and we choose route map ISP1 for our first NAT configuration. And then of course, we are going to translate again into the egress, egress interface of the router. In this case, ISP1. Now we need to create same kind of line, same kind of configuration for the second ISP. But instead, we are going to use Gigabit Ethernet 2 and route map ISP2. This is the route map name, by the way, if you didn't notice that yet. Okay, now it's time to monitor the internet traffic, monitor the internet to understand when the ISP goes down. And for that, we are going to use Google DNS. By saying that, I mean, we are going to ping Google DNS every once in a while. And if we not receive the ICMP reply from Google, we will assume that the internet went down and will trigger the switch over to the second ISP. For that, we are going to use IPSLA. Let's configure that. 
Now what we are saying here is that uh, this is the object uh, number or name of the IPSLA. So this is the IPSLA number one, let's say. And I'm saying that uh, use ICMP echo towards this IP address using the source interface gigabit one. And the reason why I use gigabit ethernet one, if the ISP goes down and we switch over, unless we use this interface as a source, we will still be able to ping Google DNS using the second ISP which will trigger the router to switch over again to the primary ISP. And we don't want that because only because Google DNS is reachable from the second ISP, that doesn't mean that the primary ISP is, is alive. So we need to use Gigabit Ethernet 1 as the primary ISP interface here to monitor the Google DNS only using the primary ISP. Now this says that the timeout is five seconds and this says that the check every five seconds. Now on different platforms, you might have different timings here. On this virtual router, we have limitation to use 5,000 mil seconds and five seconds here. Now we want to activate this IPSLA because we only have the configuration, but it's not active. You can actually activate uh, IPSLA based on the timing, but what we are going to say here is that uh, let's start it now and run it forever. Forever and start it now. Now, if we go and check show IPSLA summary, we'll see how the IPSLA configuration behaves. Do we have the replies from Google DNS, for example? We do not. Let's see what's going on and why we don't have it. It's alive. Oh, because we didn't put the default routing yet. So let's put default route here. For that, we are going to do IP route track one. Uh, did I mistype something? Yep, track one. Now what this, this says that uh, track this routing table and if IPSLA goes down, remove this default route from the routing table. But why would it remove? We didn't do anything, right? Here's why. Track one. IPSLA1 reachability and this this will activate to track down the in routing table I mean to shut down the default route to remove the default route from the routing table and then again we are going to put the second default route using the second ISP IP address and we do administrative distance 10 because when we have these two routing tables we only want first route configuration to be active and if track goes down if the IPSLA goes down we'll remove this and only then this routing configuration will be active now the reachability went from down to up because we put the reachability configuration here. So right now track one is up. Let's see if you can check that. IPSLA track, show track here, track one. Okay, you see reachability is up. Now the reason why this is up is because if we do show IPSLA summary, we have returns, ICMP returns from Google DNS. And that's why primary route configuration is active. So if we check show IP route here, we'll see third octet is 51, which is our primary ISP address. The backup ISP is the 56. So right now we use primary ISP have the configuration and we perfectly can ping Google DNS for example but this is not finished yet we also need to add the IP uh, not translation clear configuration because when we switch over to the secondary ISP we need to clear out the IP not translations that are still active using the primary interface for that we are going to use a little bit automation let's do event manager applet and we name it clear net translations now when do we want to trigger it this is when we want to trigger it if the track one goes down let's run the commands what we have in this ip declare not translations and the commands we are going to run is this Okay, let's review our configuration from the beginning. Everything we have configured. First, this is to track the tracking using the ISP, uh, IPSLA, it means if IPSLA goes down, make the track one also go down. 
then this is our primary ISP configuration. We have NAT outside, which is really important. And we have IP address, which is also, of course, very important. And then we have secondary ISP with a little bit different IP address. And then we have IP NAT outside configuration. And of course, we have third interface, which is the inside interface with IP NAT inside on it and the LAN IP subnet on it. We don't use the fourth interface. Then we have IP NAT inside configuration using route map. ISP1 and ISP2 for the interface 1 and interface 2. After that, we have routing. We have the access list NAT to match all these inside subnet, which we use into route maps here. Route map ISP1 and route map ISP2 here. And those are the route maps we use here on the NAT configuration right here. Then we have event manager to run the commands to clear IP NAT configuration. Now let's see if our Windows is pinging Google DNS. As you can see, we can ping Google DNS. Now what I'm going to do is block the ICMP replies from Google on the router's outside interface to simulate primary ISP going down. For that, I'm going to create an access list Okay, so I have created an access list here, block Google reply. Now I'm saying that I deny ICMP coming from the host 8.8.8.8, .8 going to any destination and if the ICMP type is echo reply. And then, then I'm saying, okay, and also permit any other traffic. Now remember, this is the lab. You don't really do permit IP any, any on any of your router ever on the outside interface. But this is just a lab, we didn't have the access list at all, so we are going to use this to block the Google DNS replies. Now, on the interface Gigabit Ethernet 1 here, I'm saying IP access group block Google reply, this is the access list name, and apply this access list on the interface 1 on the incoming traffic. As soon as I hit here, we should lose the access to Google DNS using primary IP address. Let's see if we can actually monitor this and I'm going to hit enter now. Okay, did you notice the primary ISP went down? So we don't have the replies from Google anymore, but at the same time, what we have here is reachability went from up to down. You see, our IPSLA1 reachability was up and now it's down. So if we go and the check IPSLA summary, this is the timeout from Google. And if we check show track one, it's also down, which means our route, primary route, this guy is not active anymore. And to confirm that we do show IP route, you see? And now if we switch to Windows, screen, our ping started working again, because now we use secondary ISP to reach out the internet. That's awesome, right? Now, let me show the full screen again and revert back. Means I'm gonna unblock blocking the Google DNS replies, which will simulate that the primary ISP came back again online. And I'm going to remove this access list and we'll see how reachability will go from down to up. And Google DNS, by the way, here, we probably won't even see any drops. You see, it went from down to up. Now, if we do show track one, it's up again, which means in our routing table, primary ISP is the default route again. And IPSLA summary, of course, we have OK here. And this is it. So we just configured Cisco routers, basic configuration to have two ISPs and track first ISP, primary ISP. And if it goes down, switch over to the second ISP. Now, remember, this is just a failover configuration. I didn't include any other configuration. So if you are configuring the Cisco routers from scratch, you better watch my another video, which I'll paste it here. 
it's how to configure Cisco Router from scratch because you need to apply the access list on the interface. You need to enable username and password access through the SSH, generate the SSH keys and things like that. So if you don't have the router configuration in place and you're not, you'll configure this failover configuration from scratch, you have nothing in the router, no security at all. Watch my video, how to configure Cisco Router from scratch and then apply this configuration to adapt and change the Cisco configuration to have two ISPs. I hope this helps you uh, mitigate downtime in your business and I'll see you in the next video.